What's up guys, Handish here, and today, well it's been pretty busy hasn't it? We've had lots of Season of the Drifter news, and we've got even more stuff to talk about inside of this video. So we want to take a better look at some of the rewards that we'll get inside of this DLC, the new armor, we have confirmation of exotics that'll be in this expansion, we'll talk about some of the loot table stuff, a couple of updates on Gambit Prime and Reckoning, the new game modes that we'll be getting, information on pinnacle weapons, quests, the update itself that'll be dropping next week, which is of course when all of this new content becomes available. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, a rating below very much helps me out. Otherwise though, let's jump straight into the news. We are going to touch on some This Week at Bungie stuff with additional bits of confirmation and information about the update that we'll be getting on March 5th. Firstly though, via the press release for the season, we get a better look at some of the new armor that we're going to be getting. Of course, you may have seen this in my previous video, but here are the new classes of armor that will be available for Gambit. We've got the Reaper, designed to clear waves and slay large enemies. The Invader, of course, hunting opponents on the other side of that portal. The Collector, gathering and depositing those moats. And the Sentry, designed to counter invaders and protect the bank. Now, what we didn't get in the Bungie Vidoc was any specific confirmation of exotics that we'll be getting outside of the Thorn, of course. However, via Bungie's website, we do get confirmation of new exotic weapons and armor. So that's certainly pretty exciting stuff. Annual Pass owners can add more of the best weapons to their collections. But it does reference exotic armor there as well. And although we don't have any high definition images of gear right here, it does look firstly like the Titan has got some new exotic gauntlets, as well as the Hunter and the Warlock. From what I can tell, and we don't have the best images right here, but it does look like there will be new exotic gauntlets for each class, and then a new exotic weapon as well by the looks of things. So of course we know about the Thorn, and we've got a full set of legendary Gambit weapons, and of course they have a particular theme attached to them. One that stands out a little bit though would be this one right here. Pretty likely to be an exotic, when we take a better look at it, you can actually see it's got a pretty cool icon on the side right there, and it appears to be some kind of wader bird, and you can see as well that some of the rest of the design on the weapon is pretty unique. Not entirely sure what the weapon actually is though. Some folks have been speculating is it a crossbow, although there isn't actually a drawstring on it. I don't know an awful lot about real world weapons, so maybe you can enlighten us down below. I think we could be looking potentially at a linear fusion rifle of some sort, certainly some kind of long range rifle. This has some visual similarities to other weapons in the set, but of course all of the other legendaries are definitely much more generic and belong to that set, whereas this one is something unique. Let us know your thoughts about it down below. But in terms of those legendary weapons, we can see that there is a new sword, sniper rifle, shotgun, grenade launcher, auto rifle, scout rifle, pulse rifle, and sidearm, that will come as part of this new weapon set. So that's pretty awesome as well. We do have a new press release right here. You've seen some pretty tasty images of some of the stuff that we're gonna see in this update. We can see right here in the image for the Reckoning, the new mode, it reads, winning a round of Gambit Prime is just the beginning. The Drifter has a whole new extension of the Destiny Endgame. Take your rewards and risk them in a new challenge that belongs to the Nine. Confront swarms of enemies and unlock greater rewards that you can take with you into battle. This is going to include new lore, complete bounties to learn more about the Nine and their place in the universe. But of course it will be a pinnacle PvE mode. And we get that clarification, unlock armor and the perks that will make you the ultimate competitor in Gambit Prime. So the armor itself will actually come from the Reckoning mode, but then of course Gambit Prime is a modification of that Gambit mode, but we're going to be able to use these new armor sets. So it's going to be a pretty interesting experience on the whole. I should also add that Bungie have confirmed the Reckoning mode will have full matchmaking available, and that'll be available for all three different tiers that will ultimately unlock for this mode. So there will be different difficulties that will unlock over time. The good news is if you're playing those solo, you will be able to jump in and matchmake with other players, which is definitely a positive move. Now we do get some details about new pinnacle weapons, and Bungie fleshed this out in this week at Bungie. But for the Crucible, we have the Recluse. A new Viced SMG kills with any weapon, improve this weapon's damage for a short time. That's actually a bonus that was data mined in the database quite a while ago, I believe it's called Arms Master. But we've also got the Oxygen SR3, a new scout rifle, got that classic hung jury kind of model going on right there. Dragonfly deals more damage based on the number of precision hits made beforehand. So you keep making precision hits, and then when Dragonfly procs, it will actually do much more damage. That's pretty interesting. And we do have the 21% Delirium. Kills increase this weapon's damage until it is stowed or reloaded. So perhaps a slightly softer version of something like Rampage or Kill Clip, nonetheless, the bonus damage that you get whenever you're making kills will actually remain in that magazine until you reload it or put it away. We do get a little bit more information about the archetypes for some of these weapons. So on the subject of the Gambit machine gun, this is actually going to be the first rapid fire machine gun for Destiny 2. And would you say with the reintroduction of bullet hose style machine guns, we figured a perk that played with their large magazine sizes and dealing with waves of enemies would be appropriate. And of course it does feature that new bonus overflow 
and this will kick the magazine size out even further for true spray and pray action. So that's actually going to be an additional bonus on top of the intrinsic, which is killing tally, kills increase the weapon's damage until it is stowed or reloaded. On the subject of the Crucible SMG, they say with shotguns occupying a similar engagement range while also offering that one-shot kill potential that is so highly valued, alongside always being in competition with sidearms and even the last word as a close quarters primary weapon of choice, submachine guns have fallen slightly to the wayside, so we've created Master of Arms, which is that intrinsic bonus that allows kills with any weapon that you've got equipped to actually improve the SMG's damage for a short time. And then for the Oxygen SR3, once again we get a better look. The general design ethos of a pinnacle weapon is that if it approaches an exotic-esque effect, it must work conditionally, such as activating on a kill event or asking you to risk getting into melee range. And of course you'll proc Dragonfly, and it will do more damage based on the number of precision hits that you make with the weapon. Unlike last season though, this time around Bungie don't break down exactly how we'll acquire these weapons, so we don't know what the specific quest steps will be, although to pick them up, almost certainly you'll have to visit the respective vendors, so of course Lord Shacks for the Crucible, Zavala for the Vanguard, and Mr. Drifter for that Gambit machine gun. Before we finalise some more content and seasonal stuff, Bungie do talk about exotic power weapons and some changes that we'll be seeing in update 2.2.0, which will be the update that kicks off Season of the Drifter on March 5th. Essentially, they want to make some of the legendary power weapons in the game a bit more appealing, so there will be a 25% PvE damage increase for grenade launchers in general, and reserve ammo has been increased on most grenade launchers. But you say in most cases, grenade launchers have gained 3 rounds in reserves, but this amount may vary based on the perks you have. However, magazine perks and mods will no longer affect ammo reserves, but for rocket launchers, PvE damage has been increased by 60 to 65%, so exotic rocket launchers have had their damage tuned separately. Cluster bomb damage has been reduced by 80%, that's a pretty huge change, but they do say the lost damage here was moved to the rocket launcher's main projectiles, as noted above in the damage increase. So a 60 to 65% buff, probably depending on archetype, is definitely a very significant damage bump, but of course we do see a change to cluster bombs there to compensate, because of course, that stuff could be pretty broken. Interesting change, let me know your thoughts, of course we'll see how it plays out in the game. But Bungie do add that this is very much like the kind of full auto change, rocket launchers with cluster bombs was very much the go-to, much like full auto shotguns as opposed to non-full auto shotguns in PvE content. So the goal isn't so much to nerf stuff, but to actually try and make other stuff a bit more appealing. And there are some interesting kind of archetype reworks that are happening here, let me know your thoughts about it. Now Bungie talk about Eververse for Season of the Drifter. They say we want to try something new. We will be removing the Prismatic Matrix, and instead, every week, there will be unique bundles available that can be directly purchased for silver, allowing you to directly buy exactly the items you want. All unique bundles will also contain an exclusive vanity item available only through that weekly bundle. If you currently have any Prismatic Facets, you can still use them up until March 5th. After the beginning of the new season, they will turn into expired facets. And that means they'll dismantle into 150 Bright Dust. So it's going to be a pretty interesting change, swapping out that Prismatic Matrix for bundles that will actually kind of roll out over time. Obviously this will make certain items kind of easier to obtain, or at least once they're available, you will be able to make a direct purchase. However, of course, it seems likely that we'll be using quite a bit more Bright Dust with this new system. We'll have to see how it pans out, but they do give us a preview of some of the stuff that we can expect to see in the new Bright Engrams. We've got an emo right there. These armor sets are presumably the Eververse armor sets, very reminiscent of some of the old school gear from D1. And here we see a preview of a bunch of different items that will be in the Eververse inventory. So we've got a new ornament for the Thorn, so that's kind of Gambit Jade theme, which is pretty cool. A Red Legion style ship, I believe that is. Or it could actually be a Sparrow, I'm not entirely certain. Another ship right there. A pretty interesting looking Sparrow. Guess that would be the Wings of Sacred Dawn Sparrow. And finally, a pretty interesting looking ghost shell as well. So let me know your thoughts about the Eververse changes. What you're seeing right here though is a brief preview of a bunch of resolved issues that'll be featured in the March update dropping on Tuesday. You can check these out in more detail in Bungie's blog post, which I'm going to link down below. But in terms of the deployment timeline, they say at 8am Pacific on Tuesday the 5th of March, there will be Destiny 2 maintenance. At 8.45am Pacific, Destiny 2 will be taken offline, so that it's just before the normal reset time. And at 9am PST, the update itself will actually begin to roll out, so we should be able to start getting that download. But the maintenance is expected to conclude at 10am Pacific time, which should be 6pm in the UK. However, we should essentially be able to get in the game any time after the normal weekly reset time, outside of the fact that we'll have to get that update. But you do give an example of things that'll change as we go over the seasonal boundary. Resets for Nightfall ranks, Valor, Glory, Infamy, the clan rank, prismatic matrixes from Season of the Forge going away, incomplete triumphs or quests that require stuff in Season 5, or a single season, so do bear that stuff in mind. For now though, there we go guys, I will keep you posted on even more new stuff, but let me know your thoughts on what we've broken down in this video, 
If you want a well-rounded look at the rest of the DLC stuff specifically, you can check out my previous video or Bungie's Vidoc. I'll link both of those down below. But let me know what you're looking forward to, any thoughts that you have. If you've enjoyed this video, a rating below is very much appreciated. But otherwise, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you very soon.